When setting up a new device, manually managing credentials can be difficult and often results in a poor user experience. Users may not remember their passwords and have to go through tedious account recovery flows. This friction may cause a user to create a new account or in some cases, abandon the app entirely. The Blockstore API makes logging back into the user's application on a new device as simple as restoring from a backup in the setup process so they can return to their apps just as they left them. The Blockstore API allows your app to store user credentials that it can later retrieve to re-authenticate users on a new device. This API solves this problem by providing a way for apps to save user credentials without the complexity or security risk associated with app storing users' passwords. Here are some benefits to using Blockstore. It provides an encrypted credential storage for developers. The data can be stored in the format of your choice. It eliminates friction from sign-in flows. It saves users from the burden of managing complex passwords. Lastly, Google takes care of verifying the user's identity so you don't have to. Sounds great, right? Let's talk about how to use this API. When a user signs into your app, you can save the authentication token that you generate for that user to use Blockstore. This is done by calling blockstoreclient.storebytes to store the user's credentials to the source device. After you save the token with Blockstore, the token is encrypted and stored locally on the device. When a user gets a new device and goes through the restore flow, Google Play Services first verifies the user, then retrieves their Blockstore data. The user has already agreed to restore your app data as a part of the restore flow, so no additional consents are required. You can request your token from Blockstore by calling blockstoreclient.retrievebytes. The retrieve token can then be used to keep the user signed in on the new device. And that's all you need to use Blockstore in your apps. To learn more, check out the documentation linked below. Happy coding!